Thank you, uh, Dr. Hart. Um, and thank you, Scott, uh, for, um, for leading this, this terrific program here. Um, I got here yesterday, and um, so I had a, had a full day, and uh, last, last night was a fun night. I saw several of you in the bar. That's where I was with, uh, with a group just buzzing around, and we were watching uh, two extraordinary events. We were watching uh, Kobe Bryant's final game, uh, 20 years, 20 years uh, with the Lakers, uh, and, you know, to me, I was just thinking about longevity, durability, you know, how does anybody survive a career in, in, in professional basketball for 20 years and on his last game scores 60 points? I mean, it's like, whoa, what an inspiration, you know, in terms of, you know, taking it to the, the, the next level. And on the other television, it was the Golden State Warriors who, by their, with their win last night, created the single longest a winning streak with the most games ever won by any uh, NBA team in the history of the sport, uh, surpassing the Chicago Bulls, Michael Jordan era by a game. And they did it on the last game, you know, so by, by, by that, that win. And so there I just saw new, you know, brand new. This is, this is the new basketball, you know, it's different today than it was uh, when Kobe started 20, 20 years ago. And so while we were having fun and having good conversations in our group, I was also reflecting on how some of those, those lessons apply to, to all of us, you know, longevity, durability, but also respecting that past, but embracing what's next and embracing uh, the future. And so I'm going to talk a little bit uh, about that. But on my day yesterday, uh, continuing on that subject, I, I spent time on campus, and, which I always do when I, when I come here. I think you know I'm a, I'm a, um, I'm a passionate wildcat myself, and uh, so just going to campus and continuing to see the evolution of that, uh, pro our program as well as the campus itself is always inspiring to me. But most inspiring was I got to, I got to spend a lot of time with students. First, um, the students that uh, we, we've hired at Macy's Inc. Uh, and I'm very proud to say that we've hired 45 uh, graduates uh, and interns for this year. And that's the largest number. Yeah, you can clap for that because they're all in the back, back there. And, um, you know, and I, of course I always say to my re recruiting team, who's just an outstanding group, um, that, uh, you know, sh absolutely I love to have you hire uh, the, those graduates from our Lundgren Center and from the Eller Business School here and, uh, and from the university in general. But, um, you know, what I really want is the, you know, the best, you know, graduates, period, the best seniors, period, the best juniors, period. That's what I really, really want. And what they've concluded is that they're right here. The best students are right here. And uh, they have an advantage. Uh, with our, our program here, which is now 500 strong, making it the largest retail program in the country. They have an advantage because they're actually, unlike me, you know, and I, where I really wasn't, you know, prepared to enter the, the, the retail management program, these young people are, uh, and they're getting extraordinary exposure. So my message here, first message to you, if you're not hiring from the U University of Arizona, you need to, because this is the future leadership uh, of our industry, and, uh, and I, I couldn't be more proud, and you will be as well, uh, of these students. And then I finished with, uh, with uh, just a, uh, a, you know, sort of a Q&A um, session, and, um, and Courtney Reagan was, he was here to fire away questions, and we did that in front of about 200 uh, students. Uh, and it was just, again, it was just absolutely fantastic to listen, and I stayed and talked to them afterwards, and you just will be so impressed. Uh, with this student body. So I would just want to encourage everybody to take it, don't, don't forget, meet the students. There's a bunch of them here uh, with the program, which I think makes this conference unique and different, that we have, of course, the executives from all of the companies, which we're so grateful for, uh, but we also, we also include the students for their education, and I would encourage you to spend some time getting to, uh, to know them and discover what I have, and that is this is a great place to fill your companies uh, with your future leaders. So my topic um, is, uh, is going to be uh, that, look, we're all, you know, if you're not in the automobile industry or the restaurant business or healthcare business or 
uh, home improvement business, all those businesses are doing just fine, generally speaking, that customers certainly gravitated in that direction. Uh, but if you're in a fashion retail uh, business, more than likely, you know, it's been a challenging, uh, challenging period for, uh, for us and for, and, and, and for you. Um, and that's, you know, that's, that's okay. We're, we're used to coming up against these challenges and, and, um, and, and, and addressing them. But um, I've always found, when I've, when I've found these, uh, the, these, these places where you, where, where you have these headwinds in your face, that the only way to move forward, get past them, is you have to do things differently than you've done in the past. You know? So you can't do the same thing over and over again and expect a different result next time, right? That's Einstein's uh, b belief, and it's certainly uh, uh, the rest of ours as well. So, so I'm going to talk a little bit about what uh, are some things that you know, we, in fact, are doing uh, differently. I'm going to focus on, um, on three of them, and they're lit up here on the, on the screen. Uh, Macy's Idea Lab, Macy's Backstage, and, and our Blue Mercury store. Just as some examples that I can assure you there's a lot more going on in our company than this, but um, I'll give you a little heads up about some of the things we're, we're working on. So, first innovation is Idea Lab. So, um, uh, we, you know, I talked a little bit uh, at yesterday on, on campus about when I was making the decision with my team to move the headquarters of all of our merchants and, and marketing team uh, to New York City. And at that point, it was 2008 and 2009, we had um, offices in eight cities around the country. You know, Macy's West, Macy's uh, uh, in, in Miami, we had Macy's in, in uh, Seattle. And, and, I, and, and we made a big decision to consolidate that group into one part of the country, and I felt that in order to attract the best talent in the world where people really wanted to live in that creative environment was New York City. Uh, and even though I knew flat out it was a more expensive city than many of my other choices, I felt that talent was the most important uh, decision maker for me and for, for us, and we've been very pleased with that, uh, that decision. So we headquartered the merchants and the, the marketing team and many of the, the planning team in, the, in, in, in New York City kept all of our uh, back office or a great deal of our back office uh, in Cincinnati where Federal Department stores originated and that still works. Uh, but it, then we had to deal with uh, the, this in, uh, the growth of our online business and already in that, in that period of 2008, uh, the, our online business was growing very rapidly. And again, as we started thinking about talent, we were competing, particularly back then, I think it's changed a little bit today, but we were competing back then against Silicon Valley. I mean, that, that was our competition for talent. So we made the decision, which was a big one, to leave all of our software developers, all of our engineers, and all of this, this whole team that, uh, of everything you see on Macy's.com and Bloomingdale's.com, that talent we left in San Francisco and just completed a new building last year uh, for them, because we've expanded, obviously, and with, with our growth, we're now the sixth largest internet company in America. Uh, so we, 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 and it was a talent decision um, to, to, to leave, that, leave that group there. I moved the, the, the Macy's.com merchants and, and, and planning executives and marketing executives to New York City because of the same reason, you know, for, for that, that's where the talent pool exists. But all of, the, all of the, the developers I left in San Francisco on purpose, and I'm, again, we're very pleased with that that decision. So we created this building. We said, well, we're creating this building. Let's, let's make it, let's, let's, we're not competing, you know, against, um, you know, other uh, traditional department stores for the, t for the talent here. So, so let's also think about the space. Let's also think about what would Google do for their offices? What would Facebook do for, for their offices? And think like that in terms of creating our in environment for this, this population of, uh, of young, talented people. And not just for the group we have, but the, the group we were about to attract. And, uh, um, and, and I'm going to show you that in a minute. Um, uh, but it was, I actually had them put a billboard on the, on the as we, the, the building was going up, I had them put a billboard uh, on top. And it said, um, if you're in the technology industry, um, you know, you could be at work right now if you work for Macy's.com. So no need to drive the next 45 minutes to Silicon Valley. 
And, and uh, because it, all of the, these young people, they want to work you know, for technology companies, but they want to live in downtown San Francisco, where all of the activity is. And so uh, I, I, we try to use that as, a, as an advantage, and I think it's, uh, I think it's worked well for us. But um, mostly, it's not, it's not just the space, it's the people that, that make this work. I'm going to introduce you to Mike Robinson, who heads uh, um, our, our offices there, and uh, we'll watch this video to get a look at what the Idea Lab is all about. I think the idea came from a very, very simple concept of uh, us as a corporation wanting to adopt more, better, faster, and really saying how can we reinvent the retail effort, especially in the digital space. The process all starts with a challenge. The employees provide ideas. They are then voted on through a social polling widget that we have. The top three come into a management shark tank where they have five minutes to pitch their idea. Based on the outcome of that, we say, go forward, we will invest. You got an idea, you built it, you tried it, you found this is what customers would use. That's like super fast. Yeah. <laughs> it then goes into the idea lab. Once we have outcome of the idea lab, which is a working prototype, and we have real customer experience associated with it, we then make a go, no-go decision as to whether we want to bring it into production or not, and then it moves into our lean development process. So we took the time frame from this down to this. Which was like, I would say, like that much. A great example is image search, where we put a challenge out to our employees and we said, if you had another way of finding product, what would it be? And somebody suggested, well, what if you started using pictures? Everybody has their mobile phone, everybody is taking pictures. Is there another way of being able to use that to actually search for product? Look at the visual search idea. It has got the tenants of more, better, and faster. Yeah, I mean, if you think about more, because of the way that the team worked and the dynamics, we were able to get something that would have cost us a certain amount, about 50% less. And here we are iterating over and over and over based on customer feedback to really get the best possible result. And I think super critical is the notion of the safe harbor. Instead of typically where we have the hierarchical approval chain and you gotta get a lot of folks in a room agreeing on the approach, here that small team is empowered and they make decisions so quickly. It's been a wonderful experience as we've started to roll this out to our employees. It's amazing to see the changes in members of my team after their time in Macy's Labs. It's given us a chance to drive empowerment to them, to drive engagement with them, to tap into their creativity, to see how they actually want to help us change the business and give them a voice in a, in a way that they've never had before. So I wanted to move my office there, um, but there was a little pushback in the organization uh, from that. But uh, it really is a, a special and unique environment that we've created, and, and of course you just got to tiny little taste of some of the talent uh, that we've been able to attract and, and again that's the reason why it's been as successful as it has been and continues to, to, to grow um, significantly on a very, very big base and large penetration. Um, so the Idea Lab itself with, you know, within the, the, the Macy's.com, Bloomingdale's.com building you know, starts with employee ideas. Uh, throw us a challenge, throw us, uh, uh, throw us an idea. Uh, and then we vet that, we vote on it, uh, meaning the, the employee base basically votes on the idea, and, uh, and then we take that down and we have them present, you know, the top five uh, ideas, we have them present to us, and then we, uh, the, the senior leadership uh, team decides which of those ideas, sort of in a shark tank kind of environment, will uh, be the ones that will take through the process. Then we pull together the person who had the idea, of course, but also, you know, a, a developer, uh, a, a designer, a web designer, you know, someone who's very familiar with the mobile process and ideas and how that all functions and works. And we pull together this, this team, small team, for quickness, agility, and that team uh, has two weeks to create a prototype. And it either works or it doesn't. You know, and, and there's a lot of failure rate in this, in, in, this, uh, uh, in this process, which is perfectly fine. But the, co the, the cool thing is, is that we get an answer within two weeks. And we pull people out of their jobs. So we, they, they, they leave their jobs for two full weeks, and they're just part, all they do is they come to work uh, for, the, for the next two weeks in this environment of the Idea Lab. Um, and, and again, we're just, we're just really trying to think like um, you know, the, the competitors that we, we compete with for talent that I mentioned before. Uh, so, um, so, so far we've had, uh, we've processed and assessed 
uh, 31 ideas. Um, we've had have nine currently in uh, production. Three are going live this year, and more than 300 of our people have been engaged in this this process. And I think that's important too, um, because not only are we getting great ideas and feedback. Uh, from this group, by the way, most uh, of, of whom are millennials uh, who work in this, in this building, uh, but we're, we're engaging them, you know, so, so this process is a great way to engage them with, uh, with, with our company as well as extract their, uh, their, their best ideas. So that's idea one, that's uh, idea lab, and, and, it's, and it's been so good, you know, we're, we're expanding it from San Francisco to other places. Gamification is... Uh, is, is the next, and, and you're actually going to hear some more expert commentary from Tony uh, from GameStop here uh, when, he sp when he speaks on this stage, but, but you know, there's clearly an interest in consumers, I think all consumers, but particularly young consumers, um, you know, who want to make a game out of the, the, the buying process, and again, it, it's, a, it's a way to engage uh, people with your, your brand, and so um, there's a number of, uh, of, of things that that, that we're doing on, on this subject. Uh, there's been 30 tactics uh, that have been executed thus far. Um, we've generated over $100 million of business through this gamification process uh, to, to date. Um, we, and and it's a, it, this is generally a temporary uh, website design for us that we pull back. There are some uh, gamification activity uh, currently on, on, on the site uh, today. Uh, and it's all about, uh, you know, game-related incentives that gets you uh, involved in the buying process with us rather than someone else, rewards, uh, points, and, uh, and the like. And I just think that there's, it's very early days for us uh, because, again, we'll listen to Tony and experts about this, this, this subject, but I definitely think that there's uh, more for us in this category as we make shopping fun and, and, and interesting. So, the, so I said the West Coast idea was, uh, was so successful, so good, we've now moved it to um, the East Coast, and our first project there is uh, with a company, they came up with this, uh, uh, the, the company called ThreadUp. And, you know, we, we've seen a, a, um, a certainly an interest in renting clothes uh, and in, in um, and recycling your own wardrobes and the like. Uh, and so ThreadUp is the largest in their space where you take your product, and the way the, the, way the process works is you, they literally evaluate everything via your mobile phone and camera shots and the, and, and the like, and your some description about your clothes in your closet that you are prepared to give up. And then they literally, you literally, they, they have a bag they send you, you put the bag in the door, you shove your, your clothes in that bag, this big bag, and, and uh, they come and pick it up and bring it back to uh, their headquarters and evaluate it now a final time and decide if it's going to, if they're prepared to sell it or not, and generally they are, and then they sell that product and then they give you a percent of the of the sale, so so you know that's been a a growing uh, idea for 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 them. Instead of you just tossing it out or giving it to you know friends or family or others, uh, you you're now have a way to generate some revenue for yourself. And so uh, what we've done is we've joined with them, uh, and we're testing this in a few of our stores, three of our stores right now. Uh, and the, instead of you, uh, instead of you uh, having to have this bag and shipping it back to ThreadUp, uh, you're bringing it to Macy's. You're bringing your clothes to Macy's, and then we're having them evaluated, but instead of just giving you cash, we're giving you Macy's money. So, you know, hopefully you're going to take that and then obviously replenish your, your closets with uh, products from our, our, our stores. So this is one of the ideas that they've come up with already uh, very quickly, and so we're already in test mode. And the thing I love about all these things is they're fast. You know, there's not like taking a year to figure out, you know, should we try, should we do it? We're just doing it. Uh, and then we'll let the customer decide whether this is a, an idea that is going to uh, last and an idea that has uh, staying power. And the next... Uh, the thing I want to just talk to you about is backstage, Macy's backstage. So, you know, we've not been in this, this business, uh, and, and we, were, we, we always believed that, you know, Macy's is already a promotional department store, and, and we do indeed compete 
uh, with off-price stores, Nordstrom Rack or, or with uh, TJX or other companies like this. Uh, and so do we really need our own version of this? And the answer after doing a, a, enough research uh, said yes, because our own customers are shopping at off price in addition to shopping at Macy's. So they're already doing it. They're already, our own customers are already shopping there. So why not have that, uh, if that, they're going to make a purchase somewhere else, why not have it made with us if that channel is, is something where they're actually spending their money today? So we opened our, our first six stores uh, last fall season. Uh, we're happy with the results. Um, but what, what I'm particularly uh, interested in is how we're attracting a much younger customer. So this is clearly a way to get at the uh, millennial consumer because it's, there's very, very clear to us to see the consumer, customers in these stores is much younger than the typical Macy's store customer, one. Uh, and, and two is the categories that they're gravitating toward are not strong categories for, for Macy's. Uh, home decor being uh, one of the key ones, uh, and another one being uh, you know, packaged, packaged food. One of the, the best-selling items we've had in the store, we have you know, these checkout lines, and, and just like a grocery store, we have some of the key items along the, the weight line. And, um, and so one of, the, one of the number one items for all of last, last fall was uh, you know, this packaged pasta. I mean, I'm not talking prepared pasta. I'm talking in the package, you know, pasta. Well, we don't sell a lot of that at Macy's, you know. So this is uh, this is new business and uh, and and new customers. So we um, uh, we think it's a, a good thought. But here's a video, you know, about um, about Macy's backstage. Give you a look at it. What is Macy's backstage? Everyone deserves to look and feel like a star. So we're redefining the off-price market with great styles for the whole family. Our fresh attitude and tone will help savvy bargain hunters fall in love with shopping and that thrill of the hunt all over again. We're connecting customers with brands we're famous for and many that are new. Our My Macy's customer research helps us tailor the perfect merchandise for each location. But backstage is a Macy's experience unlike any other. Unique categories and a bold new selection, over half of which has never existed in a Macy's store before. We think customers will always find what they're looking for, even when they're not quite sure what that is. Shoppers will experience fresh deals every single day. No coupons, no sales, and an average item price of under $20. We're utilizing a more agile, space-friendly approach to reach our backstage customers wherever they may be. Major markets, smaller markets, and new this year in your local Macy's store. Bringing the magic of Macy's backstage style to everyone. So, you know, you heard the words uh, thrill of the hunt, and that's, uh, that certainly describes this, this customer. They're not looking for, you know, 50 key item sweaters that you would see in a typical presentation at a department store, but they're either, rather looking for that one off item that they've discovered and found and uh, that, that works for them. It's in their, it's in their size. You, uh, there's um, uh, you know, a, a slide there that we have with that sunglass hut. One of our partners is actually putting their sunglasses inside these backstage stores. Uh, and, and, and they are getting, you know, becoming part of this as well. So we're, we're, we're experimenting with new ideas and, and how to make these uh, different than uh, the other off-price stores and uh, happy with our, uh, our results so far. An idea that I'm, uh, another new idea that I'm, I'm very excited about, and we've talked a little bit about, is now taking these Macy's backstage off-price stores and putting them inside a Macy's store. You know, so we're going to find out you know, just, just how much a crossover customer there is or how much incremental opportunity there is by adding um, this new business inside of the Macy's store. And look, there's a lot of these, you know, I, I don't ever worry about the top 150 uh, shopping, uh, shopping malls in the country. I don't worry, I mean, well, they'll have issues with tourism some years and some things else the next year. Uh, but overall, I'm not concerned about them. They're gonna be good and they're gonna be strong and the, and the mall developers are gonna invest in them and I'm gonna invest in those stores. The next 500, I don't worry about the bottom ones either. We're, you know, if, if it's not working and, and the demographics have shifted and everything's changed or a new mall's been built across the street from the old one, those will take care of themselves over time. But the, the one in that middle, that big group in the middle, is, is, is what I'm very focused on. And we need to make those stores more productive. 
So if I can take 25,000 square feet out of a 180,000 square foot store and drop in a business that's a new business and a new reason for customers to make a trip to our store, you know, I'm all over that idea. I love that idea. So we've opened two. My CFO, who some of our pre people know, Karen Hogay, who's, who's brilliant and fantastic, and she's, pre pre she's prevented me from making a lot of other mistakes that I otherwise would have made, because I typically want to just go, you know, and just try it. Let's go. Let's make this happen. And she's like, no, 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 no. Calm down. Slow down here. And uh, so she told me not to say this, and I'm going to say it anyway, because she's not here, uh, that, you know, we've only, been, we've only been in business for two in two stores for 10 days, but we are really, really thrilled with our, uh, our, our results so far. Uh, and so it's clearly incremental business. It's, making, it's doing exactly what we hoped it would do. It's making the store, the total store, more productive. There is likely to be some cannibalization where some customers will buy from backstage and then won't buy from the core store. But net, net, if the total store grows, it's a winner because I've got the same I'm paying the same rent that I was paying with two stores that I was with, with one store. And so, you know, the, 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 the math here uh, can work very well. So I'm, I told Karen I wouldn't get enthusiastic about it, so this, I'm just, you know, I think it's okay. I think it's an okay idea. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, that's, that's the backstage in, inside the store. Another idea we have, we bought a company one year ago called Blue Mercury. Uh, Blue Mercury is, is, is the highest end um, beauty store in, a, in America today. Uh, and so very unique brands, very, very high service, high touch business, um, brands that we would not care have at Macy's typically. I mean, Herald Square, San Francisco, Union Square, stores like that basically have everything, but all, all of the brands. But the ma large majority of our stores would not have, you know, Trish McAvoy, Bobby Brown, uh, who spoke here uh, recently, uh, or uh, La Mer, or brands, brands like this, um, because you have to do a certain amount of volume in that counter to be able to justify the, the staff, the, the, the investment in real estate and the like. Well, the Blue Mercury idea is you take a whole store with all of these brands and many others uh, and, and, and you basically drop it in. It's like dropping in a high-end Sephora store inside of a Macy's store. Uh, and it gives us brands that we otherwise would not have access to. So it's, you know, this is, you know, we're a very, very strong player in the beauty, in the beauty business, certainly one of the largest, if not the largest, of most uh, people that we do business with in terms of relationships with brands. Uh, but how can we make this business even bigger, even more productive? And that answer comes from new products, new brands, and new ways of selling them. And so I'm going to show you a video here uh, about Blue Mercury, and it's largely on the, uh, on, on the freestanding stores uh, of Blue Mercury, so you're going to get a sense about what that's all about. Meet today's beauty and cosmetic customer. She's an educated and decisive shopper who needs luxury cosmetics and beauty brands that solve her day-to-day -day beauty concerns. More informed about beauty than ever before, she still wants a friendly neighborhood expert to find the perfect solution. That's one reason we've joined forces with Blue Mercury, the largest and fastest growing luxury beauty products and retail spa chain in the country. Founded as a single neighborhood store by Marla and Barry Beck, Blue Mercury continues to achieve phenomenal growth. With its unique business model based on skilled employees, curated products, and convenient locations, Blue Mercury is a huge success in a growing cosmetics industry. Blue Mercury brings a comfortable and clean environment where everything is accessible to touch, feel, and sample. No counters means more conversations, which means more solutions to beauty challenges. With the purchase of Blue Mercury, Macy's sees beauty as a continued platform for growth and innovation. We'll reach additional customers by supporting the growth of standalone stores. Additionally, we'll be bringing our omni-channel expertise to Blue Mercury's brick-and-mortar operation, e-commerce site, including a push to grow mobile for a seamless customer experience. At the same time, Macy's will be adding Blue Mercury products and shops inside Macy's. Four shops have launched already, with plans to expand the brand to more Macy's locations. For the very first time, we'll offer our customers a wide variety of cosmetic and beauty products and brands in 
one spot, including Blue Mercury exclusives like Loon and Aster and their top-selling proprietary brand, M61, Macy's first private label cosmetic brand. The M61 product line combines the best of technical skin science and power-packed naturals. Backed by years of research, M61 has become a runaway cult brand and top seller. Some shops will also feature the very finest in luxury spa services, like Blue Mercury's results-oriented, world-renowned oxygen facials, microdermabrasions, and glycolic peels, bringing the nation's hottest spa concept locally to Macy's customers, making us a true one-stop shop for all of our customers' cosmetic needs. Together with Blue Mercury, we'll change the face of the beauty industry. You could call it a makeover. We call it the magic of Macy's. So, you know, like backstage inside of our store, this experience in the beauty world on our floors is a different experience than we've had in the past. It's something new. So we will continue to open up freestanding Blue Mercury stores. Uh, we will have about 115 uh, by the end of 2017 on our current expansion uh, plan. Uh, but we're also now moving forward. We've got four so far of these store within a store, Blue Mercury stores within inside of Macy's already open and, and operating, and we're rolling out another 18 as soon as we can. So it's now it's just a matter of time, space, planning, uh, and all of that to uh, expand this, this program, and it's something we're, um, we're, we're very excited about. And, uh, and as, I, as I mentioned, the... Uh, the tre you know the treatment room is just a you know we don't have that inside of our of our stores it's really a different experience for for our customers and so we're excited about that service level that goes along with it and the ripple effect that that will have on our brand so idea lab backstage blue mercury um, a few new ideas that 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 we have going on in not only freestanding but in inside of of our stores uh, that we're uh, we're very excited about. Uh, another one is our is is our what we call um, last act, which is taking our clearance from apparel out of the various departments and moving into one location, identifying it, and putting a new pricing system in place that is just one price, uh, as opposed to percent off, no coupons, no nothing. It's just one one price, and that's been expanded to being expanded to all our stores. Didn't exist last year, and again, something that we're very pleased with so far. And and the side benefit, of course, is that there's no there's no major clearance on your apparel floor. You've you've separated it out so the customer can see what's new and what's exciting and what's the latest fashion uh, at in, in at full price. And so that itself is in, in itself um, is another new idea. So. I say this to my organization a lot, and I've, 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 I've made it a mantra. I've actually uh, passed out electronically uh, cards to my, uh, my organization uh, and challenged them that, uh, to tell me and to post, as I've done uh, on our internal uh, site, what are the three things that you're going to do differently in 2016 uh, that you did not do in 2015? And I want all of my entire leadership team to provide that and to make that public so that we can challenge each other whether it's enough or not. Because the only way you're going to get a different result is if you do things differently than you have in the past. That's my challenge to my organization. I would argue it's a challenge for, for all of us, particularly as we move through this, uh, this period uh, of, the, of the fashion cycle. So with that, I'll end my comments and say thank you for listening. So I think we have um, I think we have a little time for uh, for questions if anyone uh, has them and I'm and I'm gonna I'll get the, you give me the, the hook when it's time for me to, to go but I'll take a couple of questions and I can't see very well from with the lights here so I'm gonna have to you have to wave aggressively but somebody hand hand them a person a microphone if somebody has a question and if you don't that's okay too but um, any questions. Okay, here's one over here. Hi, Terry, and thank you. Hey, uh, store personnel, uh, anything happening on that front in terms of uh, efficiency or training or maybe? 
Well, you first, I, I, you know, we didn't even talk about this, but did, what a great setup that is. Uh, so thank, thank you. Because, um, you know, I, here's what happens when you're in the fashion apparel business and you order your inventory, you know, five, six months in advance, and all of a sudden it's 72 degrees on Christmas Eve, you know, in New York City. Uh, you, you, you don't sell as much. And, uh, and, and so, but the inventory is, you know, coming. And, and so, uh, you know, it became, therefore, you know, a, a, a defensive strategy for most fashion retailers in the fourth quarter and even into the first quarter as we're moving through that inventory, marking it down, clearing it out, um, and, ad and addressing it. And with that comes the need for reducing your expenses. And, you know, uh, uh, the, unfortunately, for large uh, retailers like ourselves, and I would argue many people in this room, the, the, the biggest expense base you have is their selling floor. I mean, that's the largest expense base. And as, so, so you flex down to your, your forecasted uh, sales and you take people off of, the, off of the floor that you otherwise would have had during that critical you know, holiday season. And so, you know, as I, and I, I think people who know me know that I visit stores every single week, and, uh, and I visited them last week, I visited them the week before, and I'm, and I'm, I'm intensifying that now, and I rarely tell them I'm coming. I, I, I prefer the, the uh, unannounced visits. So I can see the store like my customer sees the store. And so what I saw was that we were not taking care of the customer, and we were not taking care of our, of our, our sales floors the way that we needed to. Um, for all those reasons that I just described. Unexcusable, but those are the reasons about how, how we got there. And it's not just us, it's others as well. Um, but I've just made it, I, I, I just said, you know what, we're gonna save money this year. We've already got a, a $400 million SG&A uh, expense reduction plan in place. We feel good about how we've attacked the, the plan, but I said, but that's part of that is gonna fund a major investment to my selling floor. So one, I'm back. You know, back with, uh, with, with the right number of associates on the selling floor. Two is uh, the right people at the right time of day. And three, in the right departments. So we, do, you know, we have the technology to guide us here to help us staff the store properly. It was just the funding for, for that. And so that's, the, that's the, the first thing. On the training piece, this I never reduced. You know, so uh, several years ago, we, we, we rebuilt the, the Macy's and Bloomingdale's executive training program. So these young people, the reason that we're so successful at recruiting these uh, college campuses, uh, frankly, is because of word of mouth of the last group of students that have come through. And what they tell you is there's just no better training program. And, and by the way, it's very expensive, but it's the right thing to do. So that investment I'm never going to reduce. And, and it's, it's so important, but the experience that our young people will have through our executive development program uh, is I would put it against any program not just today but in the past days and uh, and we're very passionate about it I'm personally involved in it our uh, senior leadership is involved with it we take people again off of the floor to give them this time and, and exposure and experience and it's been a great tool for our young executives and then there's another thing called leadership development for more senior management that we're that, that we also do and pull people out of their jobs for a week and these are vice president level that we think can go to an even higher level uh, so this whole training and development of our of our people is a critical core uh, for our company and I think part of our uh, past and will be future success. Thanks, everybody. Have a good conference.